Hope you're doing good. I'm going back with another video. Back here to talk about iOS 18 Beta 4 or the Dev Beta 4 for our iPhone devices. The Public Beta 2 should be dropping, if not today, maybe tomorrow or next week. I think it came as a shock to a lot of people that Beta 4 dropped yesterday or Monday. And it really dropped right after I did my follow-up video to 3.5. So that's why I'm here today to discuss iOS 18 Beta 4. And some changes have been made, not too much, not anything crazy. But if we jump here in the lock screen here, they've changed our modules that we can use down here for the lock screen app. So if I did this, hit customize, hit this, and then I come in here. Now, as you see, I have Shazam. I don't like the fact that you have to re, uh, you have to delete it and then come back in. But they've changed some of the icons in here for the lock screen modules as well as the control center modules. And one of the first things is the stopwatch. The stopwatch is now more transparent instead of being more of a solid icon. The alarm, as you see, the shortcut is missing an icon. We also have the alarm up here that also is kind of more of an outline as opposed to a, a filled in icon. And if we continue to scroll down a little bit here, we're gonna notice something missing because I used to use it as my lock screen app and I can't no more. And that is, there's no music app anymore. Apple Music has been removed. I don't know why, I don't know if it was a mistake or it's gonna come back, but you cannot access Apple Music on your lock screen anymore. I did have it, if you go back and check my previous videos, you would have seen that Apple Music was down there in the left corner. We also have this new settings Bluetooth pair toggle, but we don't know what it is. It may not be functional yet, but this is available. And there's a new eye tracking. Uh, icon for the accessibility apps down here and so as you guys can see we have quite a few things going on eye tracking has a new app there and so these are all available in the lock screen but also if I add we add my <laughs> that and I hit done up here at the top that's something that's also nice and improved is that the loading of your lock screen customization pages load in a whole lot faster now as well so that's something i also definitely definitely like now if i swipe and i swipe up as you guys can kind of just see there they still have not fixed that issue when it comes to the color fading in and out and a lot of times it, it happens with vibrant colors so if i swipe down you see it's nice and vibrant but watch when i swipe back up watch this area right here you see how it changed. So hopefully they'll fix that. I mean, it um, almost didn't look like it changed so much. It was just more of like a flicker. But I hope that they address that for the for our iPhones and, and really iPads is that color desaturation that takes place. I hope that they address that. In terms of the control center, as previously mentioned, if you hit the plus icon up here and you hit add a control our control modules you see the alarm up there you have the same changes here as i just outlined and showed you guys in the lock screen so in terms of the uh, the, the the module icons they are now a little bit different more coherent with the rest of the icons much more of like an outline look which is pretty nice and you know it is what it is i'm not hating on it but that is here in the control center now, if we go into settings, we also have a change here, and that is with our pages. So as we scroll down, you guys will see iCloud now has its own separate page. Instead of having to access it through our Apple account page up at the top, it has its own dedicated space down here. And upon clicking on it, as you guys can see, you get your subscriber logo over there that I see happen with Apple News Plus as well. So I don't know if you get the plus aspect of their apps now you get a subscriber icon but you have that here and by the way if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel uh, but the page is still normal it's unchanged from what it was they just relocated it to the setting the main settings page as a whole so i find that to be pretty interesting now if we actually go into messages there's another slight change or update when it comes to the uh messages app and that is with rcs so upon scrolling down here you guys will see RCS right here, right? It has its own page, dedicated page. And of course, we've already talked about the explanation of this, but RCS is now expanding to the UK as well and Rogers uh, Carrier. And so it's nice to see that this is starting to broaden out. We know that this essentially killed Samsung messages because even though Samsung, I believe, uses RCS, it's not 
I'm trying to remember the exact reason why Samsung Messages is getting killed off. Uh, Samsung is no longer installing Samsung Messages and may even be updating the phones to just outright get rid of it. You'll have to manually install Samsung Messages on Galaxy phones now. But the wider, more available app for RCS support is Google Messages. And so for those reasons, Samsung is officially adopting Google Messages as their default messenger app, which they already had been anyway, like the last two or three generations of Samsung Galaxy devices as a whole. But to hear now that that is being killed off essentially because Apple finally adopted a form of RCS is actually kind of funny when you think about it. Well, one of the things that Apple actually did do was they actually fixed, to some degree, the theming for our customization for our icon customization before when you would switch to dark mode or the light mode if you had it in automatic it would not swap either the widgets or the icon colors one would stay consistent while the others switched so say for instance i put it in dark here you know i have it in dark but right now i'm in light mode i should be in light mode anyway let's see light yeah so if i swipe as you guys can see i'm not in dark mode right now now this is dark mode, that's not dark mode. So as you guys can see, the bottom pane there actually switched back and forth. They've actually fixed this now, so that way you don't have to worry about your apps changing. And so if we actually come out, our widgets now change as well. Everything stays consistent with the swap between light and dark mode, as well as I believe tint. Now for me, I'm switching back to automatic, but as you guys can see there with the dark, only the WhatsApp and the JW Library app will not swap to dark mode icons in large icon format. I don't know why this has this is the case when Apple's uh, machine learning intelligence type of uh, fun business in the background notices all the other apps to inverse the white color of the icon, but it will not do it here for the large icons for WhatsApp and JW Library app. Hopefully that will be fixed here soon for now i'm going back to my automatic but that is great to see that they did fix that here with ios 18 beta 4. another fix that they did or change i should say is if you come in here to your app library and we scroll down here to apple's apps and the stocks app has now has uh, been adjusted so you know if you guys use the stocks app often that to just see stocks or you you have stock you'll notice that the icon has slightly changed and to me i think it looks good it looks a little more clean than it did before so there's that and down here at the bottom your hidden apps folder now shows and is not perfectly aligned for me either as you guys can see there before it just showed hidden now it shows multiple different apps and and folders to, I guess, throw off whoever might be trying to look into your hidden stuff to see if you have a lot hidden as opposed to just being completely blank. Now, I currently don't have any apps hidden, but it is interesting to see that they changed the folder for the hidden apps in the app library. The other change that has taken place is that satellite messaging for the Messages app is now active uh, in the in United States or at least in some areas. So it will be interesting to see whenever you don't have service to be able to send messages via SOS or satellite, essentially. Now you'll be able to still gain access to help or to, you know, to check in with individuals via satellite messaging. So that's nice to see there. Of course, it's not something to be used on a regular basis, more of an emergency thing or just a logistics situation when it comes to traveling, you know, those who like to hike and be out in, in the woods and canyons and all that. Like those those type of individuals would definitely take advantage of that because they won't have a lot of cellular service in those negative woods. So it's nice to see that satellite messaging is something that is now gaining traction within iOS 18. We also have the, ooh, the CarPlay. So I'm not hooked up right now. Maybe I'll show you guys in B-roll, but CarPlay now has new wallpapers that are available. I think they may have gotten rid of the older wallpapers, like the iOS 16, 15, maybe eight, uh, 17. Now they have new wallpapers to use for CarPlay. And if you guys can notice, I, th I believe, you'll, you'll see in the video whether or not it's true. At the bottom where you're able to split screen multiple different apps, for your infotainment center, it's blank. It used to show an actual icon to show the split screen of different apps. It's shown as just one, you know, square. <laughs> so uh, hopefully they replace that if they haven't already with Beta 4. But they did make those tweaks to CarPlay for those that use CarPlay. And the artwork appears to be bigger when 
actually plugged in and playing in music, it, it appears that the artwork actually shows bigger on the screen now, giving you a more pleasant viewing experience of your infotainment center when rocking out to Apple Music or even probably Apple Podcasts with CarPlay. The camera has added a new feature. So if we come in here, I think camera, you still have to look it up. Oh, it is. So there's camera right here, preserved settings. So if you come into preserved settings, I don't have a lot that's preserved. As you guys can see, I just like to start from scratch usually, but they've added creative controls. So that's nice to see there. Usually I would maybe preserve exposure adjustment, but because I lock exposure whenever I start actually, well, at least I did for one time. That's why I didn't have that on. And then night mode is interesting. As you see, uh, preserve the night mode setting rather than automatically reset night mode to auto. I like it leaving that. Where is it? <laughs> Portrait zoom. Uh, no, I'm turning that off too because that gets on my nerves. Start that over every time. You know what I'm saying? But yes, it's nice to see here. Oh, you can't preserve ProRes too. Sorry, I'm mean, that in special videos. Nice to see that those are part of the preserved settings. But creative controls is something new here, or controls menu rather. The one of these two is new. I can't remember which one, but <clears throat> you see, I don't play in here often. But I know that one of these menus are new, uh, or is new for the preserved settings. So if you guys are big with preserving settings with your cameras for your iPhones, you have that feature available now. And the last feature I want to talk about when it comes to the iPhone that I may have to show on my Mac once I get the update, because right now I'm on the public beta as opposed to the developer beta on my MacBook Pro iPhone mirroring, you can now resize the window. So you know how it shows up kind of small. You can resize it to be bigger, which it would be a huge benefit because one of the things I really enjoy using is iPhone mirroring now because when I upload my videos via my Mac, I pull up iPhone mirroring and I can do all of the analytics and the SEO and, and tweaking the video to make sure it's right. My thumbnail, as long as I have that work done on my iPhone, iPhone mirroring allows me to be able to access all that from my iPhone, get it all done, and then let it finish uploading, and then I'm done. There. I don't even have to use my phone anymore when it comes to you know, my video creation for YouTube. So I definitely use iPhone mirror for that. And it's really nice to see that you can use the iPhone in that way. Order meals straight from your apps, from your iPhone on your Mac. So it's nice to see that iPhone mirroring is gaining more traction as we get closer and closer to the finished product, which is iOS 18. But one of the things that I did notice is if we come in here to general, this is the last thing. If we come to about, it's kind of interesting that the version actually fell back to J. So we went one step backwards in terms of being closer to iOS 18, which is interesting. We see certain things and features actually getting fixed and, and resolved, but we're also seeing ourselves walk backwards <laughs> and not get closer to iOS 18 stable build, but further away. So it's also interesting to see that there. And maybe it's just because of Apple Intelligence and Siri 2.0, the fact that those aren't here yet, but Apple Intelligence is supposed to be showing up in the fall or at least by fall. So it says that it will show up in beta this fall. So we may have to wait another month before we see our Apple intelligence, which would be kind of crazy. But I guess technically, if we don't get an update next week, maybe technically August will be the next month where we might finally see Apple intelligence. But yes, just interesting to see that there for the build number for iOS 18 beta 4. And those are all the things I've been able to find so far. I've been able to run this over 24 hours so far. The one thing I can confidently say is that the battery life has slightly improved. So over the course of the week, when I come and do my follow-up video next week, I would definitely have a better uh, determination on that. But as of right now, I have noticed that my battery has slightly improved since running beta 4. And I'm very, very happy about that. So let me know down in the comment section below you guys' thoughts and opinions on iOS 18, your favorite features. Are you on either beta? Are you rocking betas on, on, on any of your Apple devices? The comment section is open for discussion. And as always, if you guys haven't already, make sure to ignite the like button, subscribe to the channel, the notification bell, so all free that for this video. So you and I can sit back, check, see what's cracking. Don't forget to hit that super thanks button there by the like and dislike button, cash app and PayPal, and make sure to check the channel out for all the videos available to you. That's way to keep tech fresh and alive on this channel. Man, Micah signing out to the next video. Wait for it.